Rescue Lock Oracle. Are they playing Kirby and Game & Watch? I I don't believe How exciting. Is this real? The Blueberry. Button. Oh, button. this is real. Button check. Okay. So, um, I don't know where to start on this Kirby one. Kirby likes to crouch a lot and down tilt's good at dealing with that, is all I know. And Kirby can kill Game & Watch because of up throw hammer. I don't really have insight other than that. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Um, off stage, I think Kirby has a little bit of an advantage. Um, Dare's amazing, Backer's amazing. Um, yeah. You, you're you content with taking him off stage a bit more. Game & Watch. His up, Game & Watch's up is still ludicrous. Game & Watch is better at just killing because of up throw Nair. Although up throw side B with Kirby is pretty powerful. Oh, good crouch cancel. Lunchable's looking nutty right now. There's gonna be a lot of dash dancing from Kirby around that down tilt mm -hmm. uh, and bake it. Um, those are two big things that Game of Watch can do in neutral that are just really annoying, right? The reason oh. being, down tilt is this massive hitbox, and bacon just comes out at all the weird angles that you can't airborne approach. So it, it's just kind of awkward playing against this character, and you hope to punish a lot of the recovery. Big, uh, big sight. I'm falling to the ground. Oh, okay. Whenever you're using the the aerial side uh, up B, but sideways, horizontal up B. I know yeah. it sounds weird. Yeah. Whenever you're doing that, you're surrendering the rest of your jumps as Kirby. You get one jump. As long as you haven't used all your jumps. Got you. At least that's what I believe it is. I've definitely been able to jump after the horizontal up B. But it's a wacky world. He crouch canceled through the up tilt. She goes for the double down smash. Triple! Now, none of it worked, though. Oof. Cross up there is an interesting idea, but he got the big forward smash off of it. Yeah, that was super good. Intercept with the bacon, and then as soon as he gets past it, big down tilt. Big grab. Here's the follow up down throw, side B. But of course, being at these lower percentages, that's not going to kill. You're just oh, looking jump to out. slam more percentages in. That covered roll. Mid back here. Yeah, early. Waits just a little bit, but still a pretty early up B. Calls out the jump. Ooh, yeah. Space on the pair. Here's an opportunity here. He could go off stage. He's just going to hold the ledge. He knows. Oh, there wasn't even an attempt for up B there. No, no, he did up B. He up B then jumped. Oh, I see. He was that far out. I didn't see yeah. the original up B. My bad. Yep. Oh, but that's, yeah, that's part of the matchup, too. Game Watch hits like a truck. And Kirby is a marshmallow. And uh, in case you were wondering, trucks often beat marshmallow in a fight. <laughs> I saw that one on Celebrity Deathmatch. No, Oracle, you can see him raging. <laughs> uh, I, I was like, I saw him mouth the words. His character is broken. Kirby is pretty broken. So is Game Watch. They're all broken. This is my favorite character in 64. Kirby? Yeah. I love up tilting shields and then they get they can't do anything. It's great. It's so much. They can't fun. even roll. It's better than multi shining. <laughs> and then you learn that slight inch forward and then pivot up tilt again, and yeah. then you just destroy everyone. They shields. can't even like choose to get hit. That's true. Yeah, they just have it literally there's nothing you can do. It's it's entirely up to the Kirby. Yeah. It's great. It's like Marvel. Big forward air! Let's go! The DiGiorno's. The Domino's combo. That was definitely a Domino's moment. So I'm... So I'm thinking. And I'm done thinking because I have no idea what's going to happen next. <laughs> I'm not going to make any predictions along this, for this one. Looks I mean, like they're staying the Game and Watch Kirby route. Do I approve of this? No con, no, no comment. Oh, do I really care though? Eh, no. It goes without saying that these guys are playing these characters one because they're homies. I mean, these guys go as far back as I can remember. Uh, both top players in their own right. I mean, it's true. Oracles. And the Lunchables have both had their stellar performances at Nationals. I'm convinced, though, that... Okay, so every time I can remember that there is a... It, that Lunchables City happens, mm -hmm. it's the same week that we have IAB. 
and all the talent comes in early to go to that IAB. Yeah. Oracle enters and either wins or gets top eight. He won the one before LTC three. He won L he won yes, he won before LTC three. LTC four, I thought he got top eight if I recall. Correctly. I don't remember. I don't remember. He did LTC two as well? Yeah. I'm telling you, this yeah, guy's that was monster. that was like the ninety like hundred man IAB was LTC two. No, no, Mewtwo King won that one. But did he? But he won that. But it was right. He didn't win that one. But did he get top. He got top, top three, I think. But he got top Mew three. King was first. Seth almost second. Ah. It might have. Oh, that was the era where we had Austin too. Wait, Austin played this? You don't know Austin played PM? No. Austin. They Austin, really. Austin was the best Nets in the world for a long time. Really. On in three point oh two. The, our top three players were Oracle, Austin, and uh, Seth, on. Seth on. Seth on was definitely our number one orc. Austin had the strongest case for being number two, though. He got really? he got fifth at Lotus City too. I didn't know that. He just the weird thing about him is because of insomnia issues, he can't travel. Uh huh. But he is was regarded as pretty much undisputedly by far the best nest in 3.02. Wow. I had no idea. He's just good at every game. I always game. thought that he he's like somehow like start maybe probably played melee or brawl at some point, but started in like really getting big in Smash Four. I didn't know nope, that. He started in brawl. Um, wow. And he was an S main. That's and then Project crazy. M came along and his character was okay and he could throw a multi shine at people's shields. <laughs> um, that's crazy. Um, wow, I didn't know that. Yep, that's really cool. Austin's beaten basically everyone in, in DFW and PM. What? There is I, a... Why does he... He doesn't like the character now? Yeah. Really? Austin Austin would cream Zach. Really? Like, week, like week after week. Um, he That's the, re the original reason Roy was added to his roster. Was because Toon Link... PK Fire popped on all of Toon Link's projectiles. Uh huh. So they just were gone. Got they it. Just couldn't do anything. So then uh, he played Roy. Yeah, and then he played Roy. Roy wasn't like the optimal counterpick for Ness, but it was his like second favorite character. And then he fell in love and made a legacy off of it. There's a legendary grand finals where Austin was in loser side against Seth Lon, and he, uh, I was like, dude, just win, and he, he just <laughs> six out him. <laughs> Really? Austin's really good at project. It's really good at PM. And like, there's occasional like, he came to Don't Sleep and he got like top eight. Yeah. So he's still good. Yeah, he's good not because of any character specific thing. He's good but because he's, he's smart. smart. That's yeah. the same thing like, I I was at Shockwave last week and I was watching him play. And it's like, you see him do all these weird things and you're like, why does that work? It's just because he knows what's, he just knows what you're going to do. He's just smart. He looks like a big idiot, but he's really smart. That's crazy. So, let me ask this. Why is he not here? Uh, because there's way more money to be made in Smash 4. That... Yeah. That's fair, and he doesn't like the change of Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, he did, I, he I did like that one. everyone enjoys the marvelness that came with 3.02. I just feel like there are some things that could have... I like watching the Marvel witness and doing it to people. I don't like it happening to me, though. I mean, you you got to give and take. Yeah. Like, but no, PM is different now. This this PM is, yes, the power level is significantly lower in this game than 3.02. Sure. The problems are, there, some of them are the same. There are more matchups there where, where you're, like, interacting with each other instead of being interacted at and taking your turns and interacting at your opponent. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there still are problems. I think the the thing that stands out in my mind of, like, 3.02 is just something felt silly, or they felt yeah. uncharacteristically too... Okay, it felt too much. I think Lucas uh, Lucas Grab is one of them. Oh. The fact that I you can not spot like, dodge and still get grabbed? You don't like being grabbed above and behind you? Yeah, insane. Like, there's stuff like that where it's like, this clearly was a mistake. But it, it got through because you have a massive roster. I get it. But still, like, I that power level seemed interesting because people seemed really... People are all about that idea of, like, they want to do dumb stuff to someone else. 
Yeah. I, okay, here's a comparison. And I know this is a little bit of a tangent and kind of odd, but there was a period of time where Magic the Gathering was, like, really popular, right? It's still the most popular card game, but yes. Right, no, no. But I'm talking old days. We're yeah. talking old, old days. And it was it was popular, and it was it was getting up there. And the creators saw combos decks as something that was not fun and not intuitive. And they saw it as something that was a hindrance to the game. Yeah. And they did everything they possibly could to remove combo from the game because they don't want people to just get memed on and just feel like it was uninteractive. Yeah. And that was the dark era for Magic for a while because there was no big boom that people really wanted to play. Um, yeah. So when they instead figured that out and they added combo back in the game and increased the power level in that capacity, people started hurting that. Mm -hmm. And people started to want to play the game more because it's more important to people to feel good. To yeah. feel empowered more than it is to feel balanced. They want to be able to just do dumb stuff. Yeah, I would agree with that. So I think that might justify part of the reason why... Granted, this is more balanced. I don't know. When it comes yeah, to but you feel more powerful when you teleport, float, and air at someone and grab them. <laughs> I think I guess there's like something about PM that uh, maybe it's a oh maybe it's been uh, maybe it's more of the identity of being a little bit more goofy than maybe the other games that are out there, right? Yeah, yeah, it is a lot more goofy. It is goofy. It can, it has a lot of goofy moments, <laughs> but uh, we the PM development team judged that as not what they wanted the game to be about. Yeah, it's interesting. This game has definitely come a long way. I, I love w looking at some of the older tournaments and seeing what you guys used to have to put up with, oh, so we to had speak. Arrow Link? <laughs> we, had a, we used to have to deal with Boomerang Man every week. Oh, man. Where he. Oh, God, that was a nightmare. <laughs> Just crouch, cancel, down, touch everything? Yep. <laughs> there was a lot of Boomerang, Bomb, and Arrow. And In that order. Lunchman, t swapping to Tink, that primary, and taking it.